Hey guys, HTV Ront sent me their auto heat press and I'm super excited to try it out with you guys today. So in this video, I'm gonna unbox this heat press. We're gonna test it out and at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a pro and con list. So while I'm unboxing, I'm gonna go through some of the specs of this heat press according to the HTV Ront website. So the according to the website, the heat press is 15 by 15 inches and it uses 110 volts. It also has a smart pressure transducer and that just means that it's gonna automatically regulate the pressure and you can adjust it yourself. It's also supposed to have two time faster heating time. And then it says it has a big heat plate and efficient modes. So we'll see what that means. And lastly, it has a safety use and auto off feature. So after 10 minutes of inactivity, the heat press is gonna auto shut off. And that was it. So now that we've unboxed it, we're gonna go ahead and test it out. I was pleasantly surprised with how everything was packaged. Nothing came damaged. So on the front panel of your heat press, you see the on button. It's flashing white right now. That means that it's plugged in, but it's not turned on. Once you turn it on, it's not gonna flash white anymore. It's gonna be a solid white color. To the upper right of that on button, you're gonna find your temperature button. So you're gonna select the temperature button and on the side, you'll see the plus sign and minus side. You'll be able to adjust the temperature based on whatever you're pressing. Below your temperature button, you're gonna find the time button. You're gonna select that button and then you're gonna use the plus and minus sign here as well to adjust the time of whatever you're pressing. Below your display screen, you're gonna see three different buttons. This first button is gonna be your modes button. The modes button is used to click through the presets that come with the HTV Run Auto Press. So the Auto Press comes with four presets. These presets are like typical temperatures and times that you use for heat pressing. And then next to that modes button, you're gonna find the custom button. So this is where you can create your own custom preset. I like to do sublimation, so I'm gonna change the temperature of my preset to 400 degrees because most things that I sublimate is 400. And then for the time, I'm gonna go ahead and preset that to 60 seconds because most of my sub projects are 60 seconds long. So now that we've gone over all the buttons, we're gonna go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna be testing out heat transfer vinyl onto a regular t-shirt. I'm gonna test out heat transfer vinyl onto a sweatshirt. And I'm also gonna test out sublimation onto a regular sublimation shirt. So along with this heat press, HTV Rot did send me some vinyl as well that I'm excited to try out. I'm using this really pretty iridescent white color and I'm gonna put that on a pink t-shirt. I also cut that same design in the color pink. I'm gonna use this one for that sweatshirt I'm gonna press. Now that everything's cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and set my heat press to the second preset, which is 320 degrees for 15 seconds. That bottom plate pulls out so smoothly and it's actually a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a little bit heavier. Before I press my design, I fold my shirt in half and do a pre-press so I can find that center line. I forgot to mention that the button next to that custom button is an auto button. As long as you press that auto button, whenever you slide that tray back into the heat press, it's gonna automatically go down and you don't have to press the start button. To release the button before the time's up, I'm just gonna press that auto button and it's gonna lift it back up. I only pre-pressed that shirt for about five seconds just so I can get that center line. When I lift the shirt up, I looked at it and as you can see right here, there's a line down the center and it's gonna help me align my design. So here I was trying to figure out how to place my shirt on the heat press. I placed it sideways because I found that trying to place it towards the front or the back of the heat press, it bunched up a lot. And the back of the heat press only has about an inch of space there. So I found that doing it sideways worked best. So here's my design. I found it in Cricut Design Space. So if you guys want the same one, you can just find it there. Having that pull out tray really makes it easy to place your design because you're not worrying about trying not to get burnt with your heat press. After placing my design, I slid that plate back into the heat press and I pressed it for 15 seconds at 320 degrees. So after the 15 seconds was over, the top lifted and here's my design. So this vinyl said it was cold peel. I peeled it warm. I do suggest just waiting and doing the cold peel just because it's a little bit more difficult to peel it off here, but it still adhered really well. I'm pleasantly surprised with how this heat press turned out. Look at the design on it. I think it looks so cute. So I passed the regular t-shirt test. Now we're gonna test out a sweatshirt. I've seen a few reviews on this heat press where people were pressing shirts and I'm like, that's cool. But my main concern was sweatshirts because of the limited space that the heat press has. It only has about an inch of coverage, so you have to be careful with what you put in there. So I did the same hack as I did before where I folded it in half to find the center line. And that's the real test because it's double the sweatshirt. So once I put off that Teflon sheet and I looked at it, and yeah, the line was there. It pressed really well, guys. So I think it's gonna do good, guys. So the hardest part of pressing the sweatshirt was trying to figure out how to put the sleeve. I did put it sideways, so I was trying not to bunch the sleeve up on the side. With sweatshirts in the future, I may do it to where the crew neck is facing the back of the heat press. So that way the bottom doesn't bunch up and the sleeves don't bunch up. But I didn't have any issues this time. So on top of the sweatshirt, I'm using a Teflon sheet just to make sure the black doesn't bleed onto my heat press. 
And here's the moment of truth, guys. Did it work? We're going to see. Oh, my gosh. So once I pulled out that bottom tray, I was so happy because nothing bunched up and everything was pressed so evenly. This one was also a cold peel that I peeled warm, but y'all, I'm so sorry. I was so impatient. I wanted to see what it looked like. So even though I peeled that cold peel warm, it still looks really good. If you look at it up close, you can see that it's adhered really well. And yeah, I think that sweatshirts are definitely a go if you guys are buying this machine. The last thing we're gonna test out today is sublimation. So the only thing I was worried about with the sublimation was the fact that you can't adjust the pressure yourself. This machine has auto pressure, so I was scared there wasn't gonna be enough pressure for the sublimation to work. I found this design on Etsy a few years back, and the paper that I printed it on is actually HTV rent paper. I've been using it for years, and I love it. When you're sublimating a shirt, you wanna make sure you put a piece of paper in between the two layers of the shirt to prevent bleeding. This shirt is for my son, so if you're wondering why it's so small, it's a size 2T, and um, I forgot where I got this sub shirt from, but it's a sublimation shirt. Um, I don't always use heat tape on my sub designs, but because the space in between the heat press is so small, I'm using a little heat tape to make sure it doesn't shift whenever I push it in. And then I'm gonna use a sub protection sheet on the top of it, and I'm gonna tape this down as well to make sure it doesn't move. And then once I do that, I slide it in. I'm gonna do sublimation at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So after my design was finished pressing, one thing I did notice is that the heat press took my carrier sheet with it. Luckily, there was no bleed through onto the t-shirt, but that is something I kind of worry about. After my design cooled, I peeled away the paper and you guys, it sublimated so beautifully. So I looked and there was literally no bleeding, no ghosting. It pressed really well. This press really did its job with the sublimation. So now that we tested out everything that we could, I don't do um, DTF, so I can't try that out. Sorry, guys. But now that I've tested everything that I can do, I'm going to give you guys a list of pros and cons. I'm going to start out with the cons because there's way less cons than there are pros. The first con is going to be the no pressure adjustment. It is convenient not having to think about the pressure whenever you're pressing something, but some items need very unique pressure. And because you can't adjust it yourself, I'm going to list that as a con. The second con I would say is the space in the back of the heat press. So I had to press a lot of the items sideways. I found like that was easier because there's less bunching whenever you do it that way. So I would add like an inch or two more of space in the back just so whenever you're pressing things like sweatshirts or blankets, you don't have to worry about the bunching when you're pressing your item. Now the third and final con isn't really a con to me, but it could be a con to you guys. And that's gonna be the pressing space. So the size of this heat press is 15 inches by 15 inches. I feel like that is a great pressing space if you're starting out with making t-shirts, but if you're more established and you're doing larger t-shirts, it's not gonna be big enough for you. I do have two other heat presses. I have another 15 by 15 and I have a 16 by 20. I use my 15 by 15 a hundred times more than I use my larger one. So I think 15 by 15 is good, but if you need a larger one, this won't work for you. So now that we're done with the cons, we're gonna move on to the pros. Like I said, there's way more pros than there are cons. So the first pro I'm gonna say is the auto shut off. So there's been times where I'll plug my heat press in, I go off and I do something, and then I'm like, oh my God, my heat press has been on for like 30 minutes and I haven't been using it. So I like the auto shut off at 10 minutes because you don't have to worry about that at all. Pro number two is gonna be the ease of use. So there was literally no setup with this heat press. I took it out of the box, plugged it in, and it was good to go. Pro number three is definitely gonna be that pull-out plate. Having that pull-out plate there makes it a lot easier to work without having to work directly under the heat source. I have a clamshell heat press and I also have a swivel heat press. This pull-out heat press is my favorite one by far because I'm not working directly under that heat at all. Pro number four is gonna be the fact that it doesn't emit a lot of heat at all. I think there's a fan within this heat press because it does make a little noise, kind of like a like a computer fan whenever you're pressing. And I think it keeps the heat levels low because when I have my other heat presses on, it is so hot in my room, but this one did not do that at all. Pro number five is gonna be the price for sure. So you can find this heat press full price for about $300, but it goes on sale a lot. It's actually on sale right now for $250. I don't even want to tell y'all how much I spent on my other heat press. Let's just say it's close to double the price of this one. So pro number six is the fact that you don't have to use a lot of pressure to use this machine. And what I mean by this is with my other heat press, it's a clamshell. So I have to grab the top and clamp it down and put a lot of pressure on it when I'm using it. But this one, literally the pullout tray is so light. And because it's an auto press, it automatically goes up and down. So you're not having to manually do that yourself. 
This is going to be really good with somebody who might have like um, like dexterity issues or like someone like me. When I was pregnant, I had carpal tunnel in both my hands, so I couldn't even use my regular heat press because I literally couldn't pull it down. But this one is a push of a button and I could do that. So my final thoughts is that I definitely think this heat press is worth it. So like I said before, I spent a lot on my first heat press and that one is a 15 by 15 as well. And I still use it all the time. Will this heat press replace my other one? No, it won't but I will definitely use them in conjunction with each other. And the only reason why I won't replace my other one is because of the space issue. So the space in between the top and that bottom tray is about one and a half inches. And I press some big things sometimes because I do do sublimation and the bigger things that I press won't work in the smaller machine. But I'm definitely gonna use this auto press whenever I'm doing bulk like shirt orders or even like um, I do koozies sometimes. Those are gonna be great for this machine because the auto press makes it so convenient and it's actually a lot faster than using my other heat press. Anywho guys, that's all I have for you. If you guys want this heat press, there is a link in my bio. It is an affiliate link, so if you buy it, then I will get a little bit of a commission. So leave a comment and let me know if you guys wanna get this heat press, if you already have it, and then any questions or concerns that you still have after watching this video. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Bye, see you next time. Mm -hmm.